الحمد لله الحمد لله العزيز العليم الذي خلق الإنسان في أحسن تقويم والذي رحم المكلفين بنزول هذا الكتاب الكريم والذي من على الخلق بالنعم التي لا تحصى من فضله العظيم نحمده سبحانه ونشكره على آلائه ومنه وخيراته التي نعلم والتي لا نعلم لا إله إلا هو ذو المعروف الذي لا ينقطع والإحسان القديم ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الرحمن الرحيم ونشهد أن نبينا وسيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسول عبد الله ورسوله النذير المبين والهادي إلى الصراط المستقيم وصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الذين فازوا بعز الدنيا وفي الآخرة بالنعيم المقيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم واخشوا يوما لا يجزي والد عن ولده ولا مولود هو جاز عن والده شيئا إن وعد الله حق فلا تغرنكم الحياة الدنيا ولا يغرنكم بالله الغرور أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters, there is a day in our existence that is the most important, for it is the day of our primordial inception. There is a day in our existence that is most consequential, for it is the day that some of us are granted complete absolution. In all the days of the year, one serves the greatest reminder of Allah's beneficent blessings, perfect favors, and continual guidance. But it is also the day most dreaded by Iblis and his helpers. And thus, it is a day we must spend in tearful repentance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that made this day special and swore by it twice in the Quran, demonstrating its greatness, but only to those who reflect. So today, my dear respected brothers and sisters, let us heed the call of Allah and adhere to his sound advice and treat this special day coming with its due reverence and respect. The day in question, brothers and sisters, is the day of Arafah, a day and a place that has four significances that I want to reflect upon with you, inshallah. By the end of it, you'll be amazed at some interesting correlations in the Quran about this day. So let us start with reflection number one, our primordial inception. I mean by that, at what point did you and I become a new being? The Quran tells us that you're not a human being technically the day you were born. You were alive before you were born, the Quran teaches us. Allahu Akbar. You see, that first point we can spend an entire day upon because it dispels the nonsensical scientific notion that you were once an ape. If we evolve from apes, there will be no apes left. 
But that's not even my point. My point is bigger, and that is you were alive before you were born. Reflection number one, Surah Al-Araf, Surah number seven, ayah number 172. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how we began. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَا شَهِدْنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in this long surah of Al-A'raf that tells us from beginning to end, from Allah creating Adam to us entering Jannah and Jahannam. In that surah Allah says that recall, do you remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extracted from Adam from his loin, all his children, and make them take a testimony. What that describes, brothers and sisters, is an occurrence that you and I do not remember. And yet Allah says, so that way in the day of judgment, you don't say, I forgot. It means that that occurrence is etched in our souls somewhere. And that is our misguidance that makes us forget. Allah says that he took every single one of us in our primordial form at the very first moment of our consciousness and it presented us with a question the question is not are you alive can you speak do you see me the question simply am i not your lord and we said we said indeed and we bear witness Allah explains why he made that the first thing that happened to you and I in the moment of our exception. He says, <laughs> So that you don't say the day of judgment when Allah is not questioning you about your deeds, about your belief. You say, I had no idea you were my Lord. That's why I didn't worship you. I followed this guy, I followed that guy, I followed this religion and that religion. So Allah says, I don't want any excuse on the day of judgment. So I'm telling you now, I am your Lord, subhanAllah. Why is this important to the day of Arafah? Because the Prophet wasallam said this about the plains of Arafah in dunya, that Allah extracted from Adam, from his loins, all his children in that very Yes. The plains of Arafah is where all human beings stood and took this testimony according to the hadith of the Prophet And like salmon, we all swim back upstream once a year in our original spawning ground. Allah. Look at the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He could have called us to go in any spot he chose on earth. He made us go to the very first spot, our primordial inception took place. That's number one. The importance and significance of the place of Arafat. Point number two, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to swear by the day of Arafat. Many things Allah swears by the Quran once more, but this day Allah swore about it twice. And I want you to pay close attention to the suwar and the ayat. Swearing number one, Allah taking an oath. He states in the infamous surah, Surah Al-Buruj, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Wassamaidati Al-Buruj, whenever Allah makes an oath, it starts with the wa'ad, wa'al-a'af, wassamaid, okay? Wassyams. Wassamaidati Al-Buruj, wal-yawmi al-maw'ud, wa-shahidin wa-mash'ud. The third ayah of Al-Buruj says, wa-shahidin wa-mash'ud. And Allah says, I swear by, the witnessing and the witness and the witness. The witness, Shahid, the Prophet Sallallahu states in a hadith in, by Imam at tirmidhi that was Shahid is Yawm Allahu Akbar. This day takes witness upon us. The Malaika who took attendance for all of those who were here. You and I sitting here having to fill this room, there are a thousand Muslims who live in this area. The malaika are taking attendance who came to visit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his day. Wa mashhud, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa states, is yawm arafah, the witness. It's the day that we witness. So Allah swore by it once in Surah al The next time Allah swore by it, 
is another surah that starts with an oath, as Allah states, when fajri wa layalin ashrim wa shaf'i wa wat. Wa shaf'i wa wat. The even and the odd, it was also explained by Ibn Abbas that the Prophet وسلم, said, the even is the tenth of the Hijjah, Yawm al Nahri, and the odd is the ninth of the Hijjah, Yawm al Arafah. Allahu Akbar. Allah only swears upon it by important things. And since He's the Creator, He's the only one who can swear by these things. Can you imagine something so important? that Allah swore by twice in Quran. Allahu Akbar. That's how important this day is. And you'll see that important in the next couple of significances. And that is, brothers and sisters, Allah considers the day of Arafah the great day of Hajj. If you miss Arafah, you have no Hajj. And how do we know that it is the great day of Hajj? Because Allah says so. Surah at tawbah Surah number nine, and again, Allah states, وَأَذَانُ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ إِلَى النَّاسِ يَوْمَ الْحَجِّ الْأَكْبَرِ That Allah and His Messenger have made an announcement to mankind on the day, the great day of Hajj. That is Arafah. That's why if you catch Arafah before sunset, your Hajj is right to God. Because the other things, you can make them up. You can make a video for that. If you miss Arafah, there's absolutely no Hajj. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, Allah is telling us that the Hajj culminates at that moment when all the human beings come to stand with him and beg for his mercy. Because that's the moment Allah will forgive them and take them out of the hands of Shaitan and free them from Jahannam forever and ever. Allah. Look at the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you think, well, what's, what's so important about that? And please fill out the gaps. By the way, this is the privileged VIP section of those that are vaccinated. So please come close to each other. Get closer and feel the barakah of vaccination. Take every open spot. It's a spot in Jannah. The spot in front of you, don't leave it for somebody else. The Malafika are taking attendance, so take your spot. My dear respected brothers and sisters, if you want to really, really, really understand how important that moment is in Arafah, Look to the hadith of the Prophet which states, There is no day in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ransoms the most people from hellfire than the day of Arafah. And what does Allah do? Allah does something very special that day. As the day comes to its end, the hadith says, Then Allah will come closer, will descend a little bit closer to these people. And Allah will show pride about them to the Malaika. And He will ask the Malaika a question. What do you think they want? The human beings come from every corner on the earth, as Allah SWT says, on foot, on every animal, or any means of transportation. They will come from Alaska, they will come from China, they'll come from Africa, they'll come from every corner of the world to respond to Allah. And Allah describes them in this hadith. They come how? They come disheveled, unkempt, and dusty. Allah tells the Malaika, what do you think they want? We only go there to seek the Rahmah of Allah. And that's why Allah forgives everybody who goes to Hajj sincerely. Hajjul Mabrur, the Prophet Sallallahu says, Wal Hajjul Mabrur laysa lahu jaza'un illa al-jannah. It is the only act of worship, if accepted, guarantees Jannah. The Prophet Sallallahu says, Allahu Akbar. That's why Iblis is the most depressed to watch millions of Muslims being saved from hellfire. Before this pandemic, We've had up to 5 million people go to Hajj. 5 million. The population of an entire country be able to witness in Allah save them from one fire. So number three, it is the day, the great day of Hajj. Number four, and in my view, is absolutely significant. It is so significant that even a Jew thought so. Hadith of Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu anhu. It states that 
a Jewish person asked, said to him this question, Ya Amir al muminin this is when now he's Khalifa. This Jewish person said, there's an ayah in your book which you read. If this ayah was revealed to us, we will take the day of its revelation as Eid. Just the mere revelation of this ayah is Eid for us. We would have taken it as Eid. So Imam Khattab who memorized nearly the entire Quran, he asked, you ayah, which ayah? This Jewish person said, this one ayah for me is the biggest in the entire book. You know which ayah that is? Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayah number three, in which Allah states, الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيْتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ It's an ayah we can spend an entire day talking about, but let me give you something very, very precious about this gem. It is the ayah where Allah says, I did this. al yawma akmaltu, I completed your religion. Wa atmamtu, I perfected my favor upon you. Wa radhitu, I have chosen, selected, and I only prefer Islam as your religion. Which one of you will reform Allah's religion today in the 21st century thinking you know better than Allah? When Allah said, I already completed it. So a Jewish person, you know why that is important? They have received dozens of anbiya, which means the deen is not complete. They received Musa alayhi salam and Harun, and after that Yusha bin Nun, and after that many, many of the anbiya, Dawood and Sulaiman, Ayyub, and it's still not complete. Isa ibn Maryam, and the deen is still not complete. And only in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah completes this deen. He said, I wish we had that ayah. You and I should love that surah and respect it because Allah says your deen is done and final. It's perfect now. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, I'm not sure if you just noticed the following. Allah swore by Yawm Arafah twice and in each instance, it's the third ayah of Surah Al-Buruj and Surah Al-Fajr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Arafah is the great day of Hajj, it is the third ayah of Surah Al-Tawbah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the deen is completed, it's in the third ayah of Surah Al-Ma'idah. Allahu Akbar. In all instances, the third ayah of this great surah. Aqulu qawli hadha, wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum, wa lisa'ilil muslimin, fa astaghfiruhu inna al-ghafur rahim, barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-azim, wa naf'ani wa iyyakum, bima fihi min al-ayati wa dhikri al-hakim. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد. Dear respected brothers and sisters, I wish our khutab were hour long, but you have to go to work because there's something that is so special about Surah Al-Ma'idah saying the deen is complete. We cannot reflect about everything in there, but let me just reflect upon. Few things about that completion of deen, inshallah. Number one, and that is Allah has revealed everything we need to make the deen complete, including a framework for us to find new rules and regulations in the future. Meaning that Allah did not need to reveal everything that we needed to know exactly like point by point. This is wrong, this is right, do or don't, like Bani Israel had do's and don'ts. Allah gave us haram and halal and even a framework to form new haram and new halal. And in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah gave us the final revelation about certain prohibition. What to eat, what not to eat. For example, I get a question, brother, can I eat from McDonald's? You know, common question, meat. Allah made it very simple. <laughs> that most things are halal to eat except and in Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayah number five, Allah said in it, وَطَعَامُ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ حِلٌّ لَكُمْ وَطَعَامُكُمْ حِلٌّ لَهُمْ That's when Allah said that the food of Ahl Al-Kitab is permissible for us. Don't skin the cat. If you do, you'll end up like Bani Israel with a lot of restrictions. 
Allah made seafood halal, and I still get the question, brother, can we eat shrimp? Last time I checked, they don't live in a forest, they don't live in gardens, they live in the sea. Allah says, oh, lakum bahri wa lakum. Allah made it easy. Everything in the sea is halal. Don't ask about lobster. It's in the sea. It's in the sea. You don't pet it. You don't walk around it like a dog. You know, so Allah made it easy. Finality. The importance of that finality is that you and I cannot think we want to reform the deen of Allah in the 21st century. What we have to reform is our understanding of the deen. What we have to do is we have to expand our thinking, understanding the principles of Quran and applying it. For example, here is a principle of Allah left in Quran without a specific prohibition. The principle comes from Khamr, Surat Al Ma'ida. In it, I am 1991, Allah prohibited Khamr for good. He said, Ya Allah says, Khamr, all intoxicants in gambling, these are the abominable works of Shaitan, avoid them. The strongest level of prohibition is Al Ijtinaba. On the 1st of July, the state of Virginia, has somewhat decriminalized a little bit marijuana. I know you've all heard it. Some of you are happy dancing. I, I just want to make the point that even if the state of Virginia or the federal government of the United States makes it legal, it is haram in Islam because it's still an intoxicant. How can this be haram when Allah didn't say marijuana explicitly by name, cannabis explicitly by name? Because Allah, when he allows the term khamr, it refers to an intoxicant, sakara. So the term that we use for alcohol in Quran, Allah used, is actually intoxicant. It causes intoxication. And how do we know that this should be outlawed? Allah made it easy in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَإِذْنُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ مِنْ نَفْعِهِمَا We have a framework to form new rulings. That's why the deen is perfect. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, I can go all day about it. I just want you to know, Allah's deen is complete. You just have to follow it if you want to be saved from shaitan. And I conclude by saying, our sisters go through a lot of, you know, discrimination because of their hijab and it's part of the deen. Brothers and sisters, anybody that tells you that hijab is not part of the deen, they will be welcoming to hellfire one day because they contradict Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sisters, don't listen to that foolish nonsense about hijab. It's part of the deal. Well, let me tell you one thing. Right now, just a day or two ago, the European highest court ruled that employers in Germany and all those other signatories to that EU can discriminate, to discriminate against the Muslim woman for wearing hijab. They can suspend her from work if she doesn't take it off. Did you just notice that Allah flooded Europe already? More than nearly, they have 1,300 people missing in Germany unaccounted for already dead we probably at the hundreds flood like they've not seen in a hundred years france flooded all of them allah has given them something more important to focus about than the hijab of a woman but you know what something great about this country we're all citizens of and we ask allah to make america better america should be better we want it to be better never pray for allah to destroy america because those who came here they formed a constitution that gives you freedom of religion and freedom from religion. In America, you can choose to believe anything or you can choose to practice what you believe. What Europe is saying, you can believe in Islam, but you cannot practice it here. America, if you brought it to the Supreme Court, will rule against Abercrombie and, French, uh, Abercrombie and Fitch that a Muslim woman can wear a hijab. Imagine that. That's why Allah will support America against those others. Because at least, here you have that constitutional right to worship Allah. So when you come to your judgment, guess what? Allah says, did you live in a country where you could worship me? And if anybody infringed upon that right, you can take them to the Supreme Court. So you and I have no excuse for not worshiping Allah in these United States. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا في ما أعطيت وقنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي بالحق ولا يطلع عليك إنه لا يدل من وليت ولا يعز من عديت 
تبارك ربنا وتعالى لك الحمد على ما قضيت ولك الشكر على ما انعمت به واوليت نستغفرك اللهم ونتوب اليك ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم أعتق رقابنا من النار اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا واعف عن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منا والأموات اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من البرص والجنود والجدام ومن سيء الأسقام اللهم اشفينا من كل داء وارفع عنا من كل بلاء اللهم بارك لنا ولأهلنا يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة عين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم عنا على صيام يوم عرفة يا أرحم الراحمين وتقبل منا يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة فإن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذلك الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون